All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is the Shooting Game Weekly, episode nine. This week we're checking out R Type Delta. It's a the fourth game in the R Type series, and it's the first one in 3D. It's a really epic game, really cinematic, and uh, it's gonna be a really cool episode. Uh, kind of mentioned in a, in a tweet on uh, Twitter, like this is this episode is kind of be like a bunch of guys watching a sci-fi movie, but. A little bit more than that, like I really like the presentation in this game, but uh, yeah, so R Type Delta. Um, and this week, I'm um, joined by myself and Frenetic. Yo, what up, guys? <clears throat> also, uh, Gags, who is also the player of the replay we're checking out, he did a no miss, uh, no death 1cc of the game, and uh, we're using his footage. So, how you doing, Gags? Hi there, doing fine. And also joined uh, again by Illyrian from the Mushi Futari episode. How are you doing, Illyrian? Uh, hi, thanks. Uh, thank you for inviting me back on. Uh, just an un unfortunate thing. We were also going to be joined on commentary today by Gus, but he just PM'd me on Skype and said he was busy burying another hooker in the cool space under his mom's basement. So um, no Gus today, but we're all here and we'll do the best we can for you. Guys, no, I'm here. I'll be commenting along with uh, my waifu, Rico. <laughs> All right, good start to the episode. Um, <laughs> so it's our type Delta. It's a really, it's a really, uh, it's gonna be a pretty laid back episode. Uh, like I say, we got Gags with us. He's gonna be talking a bit about the game. Um, pretty, you know, uh, came out in 1998 in Japan, 99 in the U.S. and Europe. Um, not a whole lot to say. Our type is uh, known for being like kind of the memorizer of shmups only because like it's got uh environmental hazards that usually like you kind of gotta know where to place your ship um so gags will probably mention that as we go along a little bit but you know this is very much so uh like an uh, you know it's a true r type game in that sense i think uh you're gonna see like some kind of weird positioning of the ship and stuff but and not too much to say about uh, about the game itself but yeah uh this is the complete opposite of Mushimi Sama Futari Ultra. So get used to it, guys. Uh, we're going to be just checking out all sorts of shmups on SCG Weekly. And uh, yeah, so should be pretty good. Uh, I don't know anything else that you guys, you guys want to talk about uh, before we uh, start the video. Um, no bombs. There are no bombs in this game, which is one of the reasons why memorization is so important. You cannot simply press the bomb button. And well, actually, for three seconds. Well, not as easily. You do have the delta attack, but yeah. um, it's not as easy it. to do. Yeah, uh, I only use it once in the one specific spot near the end of the game where you have to use it because it's kind of part of the story. But we'll get yeah. to it. Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, just to talk a little bit about the story, um, uh, this is supposed to take place in uh, the year twenty one sixty four. The game came out for PlayStation in nineteen ninety eight. And uh, it's uh, shortly after the events of R-Type in the R-Type series. Um, in the year 2163, the trans-dimensional fighter R-91A Arrowhead has returned from its mission to destroy the evil at the center of the Bido Empire. Badly damaged, it has been rescued by the battlecruiser Croque Monsieur and brought back to Earth's orbital space fortress Aegis. Wait, what oh, was that's... brought back? Um trans-dimensional fighter R9A Arrowhead, okay. which, uh, which is it from the first, you know, from the uh, R-Type, the first game. So. Okay. All right, well, why don't we just get this uh, replay started then uh, without further ado. So I'll do the countdown, guys, and we shall enjoy some good old R-Type. All right, three, two, one, click. Hmm. I remember software. I really like this intro. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm. I like the fact it brings up all your all your options and puts, you know, pilot name gags up on the screen as well. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, six yeah. million dollar man. We can build him. We can build him. We can rebuild him. Make him stronger than before. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. Now the, the the presentation of this game I think is fantastic. The the cinematic style it, it's it's great. It's like almost kind of like a Panzer Dragoon kind of style of presentation mm -hmm. in some ways. 
Um, and it, it's really refreshing, you know. It's You get so used to being in the arcade or whatever and, and playing games that are designed to give you the minimum presentation and the maximum of coin stealage. So to mm -hmm. see a game that takes a bit more time with the presentation and lets things be a bit more kind of dramatic, uh, it's refreshing and it's really enjoyable to look at, I think. Yeah, I noticed in this game, yeah, you have a lot of, uh, like, different camera movements uh, with the background, and even like when it, when uh, Gags is moving around, it shifts like the backgrounds, which yep. <laughs> you see him doing it there. It looks kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it it doesn't hamper the ga gameplay in any way. It's, mm, yeah. You don't notice it while playing, really. So but, Gags, yeah. what benefit do you get from using the bit at the front of your ship to point blank enemies and uh, obstacles? Uh, well, doing that charges up the dose gauge near the, at the lower left corner. And when it's full, you can uh, unleash the Delta attack, which is like the smart bomb here. But uh, also, when it's full, all the uh, enemy bullets you absorb with it give you points. So if you want to play r Delta for points, you need to max it out as fast as possible, like I just did here. Mm, or we'll yeah. be doing in a moment. Yeah. Yeah, if you just filled it up really quickly against that, like, piece of junk. Yeah. And um, how long did it take you in terms of, you know, kind of hours played to kind of get to the point where you could clear the game consistently enough to start, like, playing for score rather than just playing to win and playing for survival? Oh, well, I'm not playing for score here, actually. It's, uh, I just uh, started doing this in the first stage because I had played it so many times and I wanted right. to do something a bit more to make it a bit more exciting for me. So yeah, I don't do it yeah. as much in the later levels, but here, here it's most of it. So it's basically, as we saw with um, with uh, Fatari and with, with Saps, it's to a certain extent where in the earlier stages you could be a lot more aggressive just because the difficulty is much lower. But as the game goes on, uh, you have to dial it back if you want to be sure of staying alive, basically. Yeah. And how important is it to... Um, I noticed that you jettisoned the bit off the front and seemed to manually control which direction it fired in to hit the enemy that was on the bottom left there. Uh, um, no, I didn't. It was automatic. That, uh, this is a seeking automatic. force, and it, yeah, it automatically aims at enemies. Ah, uh, right, I see. Which just makes it uh, pretty powerful. And a small bit of trivia here. The Mechanical Snake is in the cover of the game's PAL release. So in the US and Japan releases, it was the Dog Keratops, which is, I don't know uh, why they put it in the PAL release, mm. but yeah, weird. <clears throat> cool looking thing. There's like tons of different enemies and things that you blow up in this game like it's it's never really that repetitive i noticed it's just mm. yeah it's possible to destroy the snake a bit earlier the first time he passes you but he doesn't really give you anything it would be cool if you'd get a bonus for saving the buildings in the background but sadly no so what is it that leads you to not just like using a delta attack whenever it's available you know just to try and clear the screen out more easily mm, i think it looked more badass doing it this way <laughs> so it's just for style points, basically. It's just for style yeah, points. Yeah. I see. Well, there you, you can respect that. You see, you can respect sacrificing a bit of survival for, for style. Yeah. I like that. It's good. That's very good. Uh, these bosses are awesome as well. The big, kind of dramatic-looking bosses with the multi-parts. Very uh, Darius or Gradius style, as well. Um, yeah, I like bosses where you can destroy the bits and pieces of. Like you can do here with the uh, cannons and stuff, but actually mess up a little here. I was supposed to destroy both of the engines on the first pass to destroy him uh, quicker, but I yeah. failed it. Then now it takes a bit longer. Yeah. But there's yeah. no there's no bonus for speed cleaning, so again, just I missed out on some style points. Does the order in which you destroy the parts have an effect on what attacks it uses against you? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's always the same. Next to you also there, you kind of stuck your bit right into the into the face of the boss and let it sit there and just grind points off the uh, the weak point of the boss. Does that always kill it more quickly than just firing upon it with auto shot? I yeah, like sticking my bit. It's very good. Yeah, go ahead. I like sticking my bit and grinding away too. Uh, it's a good advice for a lot of things. Ay ay ay, dearie me, dearie me. Yeah, the force is more <laughs> powerful. For if you can destroy something with it, it's always good. Yeah. Uh, stage 2 has very cool music. I really like it. So, how many kind of, do you know like how many hours it took you to kind of memorize the game and memorize the different sections? But more to the point, in this run here, is it literally every single second of gameplay is completely memorized as in the whole 40 minutes are no, a no. series of right. So, some of it is adapting as you go and and just seeing how things happen at the time. Yeah, you don't have to memorize everything. Just some key parts where you need mm -hmm. to know what to do. 
but like yeah. this here, you don't really need to. It's just everything comes from the front for now. So yeah. it's just to react to what's happening. But I'm guessing, like, as the game goes on and you get towards the end of the game, the amount you have to memorize will, in, will increase. Like, you'll have to know more and more and more of the game off by heart as you go, get later and later through it, right? Yeah, and you need to be more accurate. Accurate in where you are and what you do. But you can still wing it pretty far in the early stages. How would you compare yeah. the difficulty of this uh, to, like, the R-Type arcade games? Um, I know you've played those ones, too. Yeah. Well, the first game's first loop isn't that hard, so this is maybe more difficult than that, but both loops of the first game, I think that might be a bit harder mm, over, yeah. overall. No loop in this, right? No loop, no. And then there's R-Type 2, which is yeah, much harder than this one, I'd say. So it's the only negative, basically, the only negative effect of firing your bit off and letting it fire automatically like that. It's the only negative effect of that you have less frontal or, or rear protection because it's not fastened to your ship. Yeah. And of course you can't do the big laser beam you're doing now. But the other thing I noticed in this is you never seem to change um, shot, like special shot type to the yellow or to the yellow type or the other type. Why is it that you always seem to stick with the, the main kind of wide angle laser beam shot? Uh, again, it's mostly because it looks cool. I really like how it looks so huge. It's right. like a big G-Dari as a beam when you fire it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like so styling. <laughs> it's just styling on the game, yeah. 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 <clears throat> and also, when you have the red weapon, you can uh, have the bits firing with you. The small uh, round bits that circle up and below, yeah. below you. Those only fire if you have the red weapon. And the bits will absorb uh, bullets too, right? Yes, those are very important later on. Yeah. So really, you've got, of course, that's the point, is you don't have, it's not easy to kind of get out of danger in this game so much, but you have protection above and later on below as well, and you have this, the bit on the front with a big blade coming out the side of it. Yeah. Um, does it take, does it take you like a long time to kind of get the hang of um, shifting the bit off and getting it behind you instead and then moving it back in front of you? Did that take a lot of time to kind of get used to doing, or was it something you picked up quite quickly? Quite quickly, it's not that, there's nothing that much, there's not any magic to it, you just do it, there's nothing complex about it. One thing that's fun about this stage is when you go in the water, the uh, music is underwater-esque. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Really, just a lot of tension to that presentation. And the uh, sound effects are all really cool, like the bugs are squishy, you like the various explosion sounds. All, all like the uh, special effects, I feel like uh, Irem was not afraid to uh, use all the effects that the PlayStation has, despite, you know, uh, the PlayStation having that gritty kind of polygonal look to it. I feel like the grittiness almost fits, um, I, I think it almost fits the like R-Type series, like things are like about to fall apart, almost, but it's like, yeah. just fucking, you got mechanical fish fucking exploding and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the thing I is of course like the water effect here. Yeah. I mean the thing is also of course at the time for the time when this came out in ninety eight these graphics were pretty state of the art as well. Yeah. So we look back at it now and it's and it's viewed in a different light. But um back in the day, you know, graphics like this in ninety eight would have been extremely passable and looked pretty much basically gorgeous. I mean they would have looked gorgeous for the time. So. I mean I, I I would say this is some of the best PS one graphics in any PS one game. I mean yeah. The way they use it is just great. Like, look at that lighting on the ground and the use of a uh, negative space with the darkness in the background. You'll yeah. notice that throughout the game. Too. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting. Um, from Black Oak's translated interview uh, with the R-Type Delta developers, they developed this game right after one of the first uh, Polygon shooters came out, Race Storm. So this was uh, they just did this like after Race Storm came out. So it's really an accomplishment, yeah. Uh, you kind of smashed that boss to pieces, huh? Yeah, you, he was a great example of positioning. I, did, I yeah. first positioned myself so that I can fire at the boss's lower part before it's even on the screen all the way. And then it's fast to destroy the, that part. And then the second part, it's, it's really quick to destroy it. The uh, yeah. mouse, mouse thing would launch at you whenever you were under it. So you just kind of do this back and forth for a while and kill it. That's one thing you see in our type games is whenever you uh, get a good shot on the weak point, like the bosses go down pretty quickly. Mm. Yeah. Sh shoot the core. 
shoot. Yeah, I was playing. Um, I was playing R-Type Final on the PS2 a couple of weeks ago, and there are a couple of places in that game where um, if you get a fully charged like level three beam weapon, you can almost one shot some of the bosses in that game. Yeah. It is badass, like one shot the boss, like fuck that boss. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, boss. You no, know, it's like nah, it's like it's like nah, I'm way more powerful. So when um when you play this game, obviously you've played you have to play this 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 game a lot to get to the point where you can you know, no miss it. Do these kind of visuals, like the big dramatic style of it, do you still enjoy looking at them after all the runs you've done through the game, or do you become kind of blasé to them and it just becomes like the early... Do the, in other words, the earlier levels, as graphically dramatic as they are, do they ever just become kind of a grind, or are they still visually appealing enough to stay interesting? Well, they're visually, visually appealing, of course, but you also start, start seeing them as just uh, this is where I need to be, this is a point of danger. You don't really yeah. see the graphics when you're really focusing. You just need to see what you need to do and where to be. I feel yeah. like this the stage is so slow paced though that like you can't help but not look at the big mech. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah, it slows it's, down here a lot. It's like it's there, it's like half of the stage right now. It's coming, you know, behind you. Usually you're scaling in front and you know your attention is totally towards the front so i really like this level and this boss yeah i mean this is interesting what you're showing here really is how just get you know you're showing the ability to get under the boss at the right time get to where exactly where you need to be at the right time and personally one of the things i've always found to be frustrating about the r-type series was the fact it's so easy to simply be trapped in a corner or something and and realize that you have no way out um, did you ever find that kind of element of the R-Type games frustrating yourself, Gags, or is it just something you've actually enjoyed rather instead? Uh, I kind of enjoy it. Once you, once you find what, to, what you need to do, it's like um, doing a routine, like a dance routine, if you will, where you yeah. know what you need to do and you, and you do it, and it's the, like you get this nice feeling when you accomplish it just yeah. the way you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, when you if if you died in this game, also there's a checkpoint system, so you don't respawn, right? No, there's a real checkpoint system, and you lose everything. But no I'm, force or bits. I'm glad you don't die though, because it, it it keeps the immersion like throughout the whole game. I really like you that are, yeah. part of it. You are a sci-fi movie yeah. star. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what you are in this game. You're a sci-fi movie star. Yeah, the last starfighter. <laughs> yeah. does, does, does this game uh, does this game have? Uh, some of the kind of negative sides to it, like the Gradius series do, where depending on where you die, it can be vastly more difficult to respawn or, sorry, to recover in certain places than in others, or is it fairly well balanced in terms of recovery difficulty? Uh, I think it kind of comes with the territory that uh, it's worse to die in some places than in others. Right. Mm. Especially in stage six, which we'll see in 20 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> this is actually the hardest part coming up if you're playing this without using the force at all, which I tried to doing it a couple of times, but it's, uh, this boss is really hard without it. Mm. You kind of make the game more interesting by not using it? Yeah, I, I tried doing that here and I tried doing it with uh, the original R-Type. It's, it's really interesting, you have to play it totally differently. Yeah. So what are the different shot types you could have if you were collecting the blue orb or the yellow orb instead? Uh, the blue orb has these uh, kind of arcing lasers that go at 45 degree angles, which also stick to enemies. And the yellow one is this uh, kind of middle range flamethrower thingy. Right. Mm. So um, a little designer note about that laser. Um, this was the ship that the designers, according to Black Oak's tran uh, translation of the interview, that they had the most trouble with. Because um, they knew how to do the R9 ship, because that was from the first series. And the next one that they did was, uh, but then the RX, RX lasers gave them a lot of trouble. Like how it would act, or how it would function in the game. So that mm. really slowed down their programming. They revised it over and over, and uh, uh, the designer... Um, Heroya says that's his favorite weapon, much like, you know, in Truxton, the blue laser. So these lasers, these designers really like them. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Truxton blue laser is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So 
film. So uh, that's the point, actually. When you were when you when you were kind of playing this game, and you you were able to kind of get through it and clear it, and you started pushing on to um, the the no miss. How, this is something that happens. I don't know about others, but it certainly happens to me a lot. Where even if I can clear a game, I'll occasionally lose lives stupidly, like by just losing concentration in the early stages. I think it happens to all of us now and then. With this game being so memorization like heavy. How often, if you went back to play it now, would you find yourself like losing lives in stupid places in the first three or four levels, or would you be able to pre fairly consistently get all the way to like stage six or stage seven without losing any lives or taking any damage at all? I think I could make it to stage four probably. I mean, I haven't played the game for like three years. Right. Yeah. But uh, here in stage four, there's a lot of crap falling on the ceiling and. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, this uh, maze section coming up that's a bit more he heavy on the memorization. I probably wouldn't be able to do that right off the bat. So once again, uh, uh, an another type of scrolling here. Now we're scrolling upwards, we're scrolling back, scrolling mm -hmm. down. They're really using all the types of scrolling. And uh, you can manually scroll in this stage too. A bit, yeah. So you can manually scroll the screen on this stage? Yeah, left and right. Oh, right. Oh, I see. Just by moving to the left or the right of the screen, you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, right. Like Proteus style in like, the wider open arena sort of areas. Yeah. Got, like, got some heroic music going on here. Yeah, very <laughs> nice music here, too. Doo 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 doo. <laughs> Boom. I think um, a, a pet peeve of a fair number of people who play these games that I've spoken to is on, on sections where you have to scroll vertically up or down, people find, tend to find them quite frustrating just because of the unusual patterns of attack they have to deal with and um, the weird way like you have to dodge enemies coming from above and your inability often to hit them directly above or below you. Do you feel any of that frustration yourself when you play the R-Type series or do you enjoy this type of movement as well as kind of lateral? No, I enjoy it, absolutely. I like it when the, like here, you need to really to utilize the bits up and below you to really attack yep. above and below. And the missiles, which are often go un overlooked, they're re really useful here. Yeah. And uh, I like it when uh, it's not just enemies coming from the front of you. Yeah. Oh, epic music change here. Oh, yeah. Uh, this section I, I I thought was interesting because uh, like on the cover of at least the North American CD, like they say like now in 3D, and like I just think of this section because it's got yeah. like these block these uh, platforms you see from the background rise up into the foreground, yeah. and it's a kind of interesting perspective too because you're you're over like the block like it's like you're over this chasm. Um, so they like really used all the different kinds of way to utilize the uh, 3D. Like they oh, really see there. We can like, see they there really think about it. He could see what he was talking about there, where he literally just peeked up over the top of one of those blocks and dropped a missile down onto an yeah. enemy below yeah. there. Missiles don't usually get much love, but uh, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, the missiles in this game they are they're um, basically kind of well they don't fire very fast but you can just hold down the button and spam them as often yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, and the different ships have a different kind of missiles. Yeah. Okay. Now, as I say because I mean I know other t other R type games have the kind of the missiles that drop to the ground and run along the ground and stuff like that as well. But uh, these green ones seem to just drop off and hit what we explode wherever they hit. Yeah, and they go bigger, bit further. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they remind me of the 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 gradius radius uh bombs a little bit they don't arc as much but that slow drop mm. kind of reminds me of those bombs oh epic music change fantastic oh <laughs> i'm doing air guitar if you guys can't see but just imagine me doing it, okay <laughs> have some fat missiles <laughs> oh, nice, nice missile voiding. Nice, nice dodge. <laughs> yeah, I love when shmups have like these unrealistically large missiles. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, that epic music, one of only one of two things are happening. Either a boss has just spawned or Gus is chasing a hooker. But in this case, <laughs> it was a boss has spawned. <laughs> Guys, I only have one waifu, but I dally with hookers. Yeah. <laughs> That is a awful Bane voice. That is shocking, man. That is that is unbelievable. Okay, stage five is like the like a tribute stage to the first R type. Many elements from the first game show up here. And here's where the yeah, it gets kind of freaky, like the original ones too. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, these are from the stage two of the original R type. The bugs. Yeah, and the brain thingies. The, oh, brain those two, okay. Oh. Whoa. I'm a big fan of the imagery in this game and the way it kind of actually goes for like a horror style approach in a lot of places. Like, it's really refreshing for uh, for this genre, you know? Yeah. Bio hardware, I wonder if this is like a homage to like Life Force as well, you know, the bio horror. Um, Mm, I don't I really think so. I mean, the mm. R types have always been about this biological horror that is Bido, so they have mm. their own thing. It's not necessarily connected to life force. I see. Guess I'm. What are these green pieces like? Uh, I think they're just you know dead enemies or dead somethings falling from the ceiling. I don't know. Some monster shedding its chunks. Oh, on the... <laughs> <laughs> and again, like you have like the black space in the background that's just used stylistically. I like it. So I mean, you're not really using it, as we said. But if you use the Delta Force here, like on say a screen of these enemies, would it just wipe out the entire screen in one go, like no problem? Yeah, yeah. The screen goes all shaky and wavy and acid trippy and. Everything so it's like a real, it's actually like a, a genuine smart bomb. It will literally wipe the screen clear of anything that's not a boss. Yeah. Right. It seems like, uh, compared to Gradius, like, the Bido, I mean, compared to the Bacterian, like, the Bido are, they're kind of, like, infesting more, like, machinery and, hum like, human things, ra rather than Gradius, where it kind of seems a little bit more superficial of a evil entity compared to our type. Yeah, Bido is this virus-like thing. Oh, and here we are starting the stage one tribute. Oh, yeah, here we are. This part is really strict memorization, really. Yes, he just went through that one, that one little gap there. Could have got trapped. That stock explosion sound. Oh. Gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the bugs, the squishy. Because of all the different vectors of attack, would this is would this be a particularly difficult place to recover in if you died here? Or... Yeah, this is really annoying. Wow. And is it That's possible really if you lucky, died yeah. here, it could actually signal like the end of your game, as in you could end up dying three, four times in a row, and, and that would be that, or...? Yeah. Oh. You, really, you really want to have the bits here. They really help. Yeah. Yeah. Almost feels like a Silent Hill environment or something. <laughs> With the music, too. This is creepy. Uh, mommy! It's, to a certain extent, it reminds me of like, it looks like uh, the environment looks like the inside of the Sarlacc from Return of the Jedi, but you know. It looks like a vagina. Oh, we're having one of those in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and quite frankly, Frenetic, I do not know what kind of vaginas you've been seeing, but um, they don't look like that, man. I'm, I'm sorry to break oh, it. You should have seen some girls I've taken home from the bar when I was a young lad. Yes. <laughs> well, what was that movie with like the girl who had like a, like a te like teeth in her vagina or whatever? Oh yeah. <laughs> they call that a vagina dentata, gentlemen. Okay, here <laughs> what we go. the fuck? <laughs> I didn't need to hear that. 
<lacht> den Taler. What the fuck? <lacht> yeah, this is without a China doubt. From the this is without, without a doubt the most uh, the most um, mature episode of SDGT ever. This oh, is yeah. most yes, highbrow conversation this show has ever heard. Yes, 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 of course. Of it's course. all about the highbrow. All about the highbrow. I think this is what happens when you get me on here and I don't know much, that much about the game. <laughs> I just destroyed some weird heart thingy. Yeah, that's the second stage boss from the first game, and that's oh. uh, very much a vagina. Okay. He is, and uh, things. So, did, uh, I know um, Gex is playing one of the other ships, but there are three ships in this game, hence, they called it also R Type Delta. Uh, the R9, the R13, which is supposed to be like the Federation of Xeon to, to, compared to R9's Earth Federation and the RX is supposed to be neutral. So. That's actually the test of four ships. Uh, three ships. The fourth ship is the unlockable one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. The What is that called? The, the delivery? The, the POW, yeah, the right? POW armor, yeah. Mm. How is that ship? Uh, it's it's pretty interesting. It's it, it actually shoots Bidos. Oh, that's cool. Bidos at Bidos, I mean. I, speaking of this game, I can he hear the eBay price like rising and rising as we're doing uh, this episode because <laughs> uh, it is it's already an expensive game to get. But yeah, really, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, isn't this on PlayStation Network? That might be the case, but. We got, you know, schmutz form. They love the physical copies. I personally like taking the manual and just spreading it on my face and breathing in deeply. Oh, so. yeah. Got yeah. to. Got to. <laughs> 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 I did that recently with uh, Dark Souls. Picked that game up. I really like that game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, my housemate got me the uh, PC special edition with the art book and stuff for Christmas. Oh. Um, it's oh, very nice package. Oh, what a nice, nice package. As long as you can mod it to actually make the graphics work properly, because out of the box it doesn't work properly. So <laughs> that's part of the challenge. Uh, that yeah. is part of that's that's that that's adding to the resale value. The fact <laughs> that it doesn't work. Uh, I feel grotesque the enemies and things are in this stage. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. It's really good. This is this is seriously our types. The, all the hallmarks of our type series, the design and the enemy style and so on, are the things that make it so compelling for me. Like it, it is unique in this way. Like Gradius and Darius do it a little bit, but they also go far more kind of out into the realms of fantasy and mysticalness with like big sand lions jumping at you through the air and stuff like that. I really like the uh, the kind of steady style of presentation here where it is about the it's basically always about this race of um mechanical biological weapons um it stays to one style and because it stays to one style it does that one style very well yeah uh, here we're approaching the probably the hardest section of the game Ooh. tell us all about it tell us all about it well you'd really want to use the delta attack here but i don't you sound so good. Word. Oh, I just heard from the chat that the PSN version got delisted, so... Oh yeah, Arium's been doing that. That sucks. Mm. Really? That's lame. Yeah, they removed a bunch of their games from uh, Wii's virtual console as, as well. Um, Zyrock asks in the chat, is this stage, the, this stage is the station you start the game in, right? Is it... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We'll see more of that in a moment. You mean where you like, where you lift it off, or? Yeah, where you pick your ship. I oh. didn't show it in the video, but uh, you choose your ship in this hangar, and uh, the hangar is in this building, and so you're at this point the bite has already infected all of your base, and you're yeah. just going in there to clean it up. Damn. It's good. It gives it gives the it gives the uh, game a proper story when you're actually going in to like save your comrades and stuff. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Well, you also end up killing them, so. <laughs> well, at least you fight. It's, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the yeah. thought that matters. <laughs> in Dodo and Pachi, you're supposed to, you you go the first loop and you kill everyone, and then you realize you've been killing your friends. 
and yeah, you find uh, robots that are like yes, robots that are based on your friends. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just a running theme in Smuts. Killing your friends and then robots of your friends. Yes. And I'm actually thinking, sorry, um, Gags, that in, in the Bido are actually initially, I might have got this wrong, they're actually like bioweapons created by humans in space, for, uh, like first, is that correct? Or am I yeah, in, yeah, you're right, it's uh, elaborated more on Earth type final, but uh, one of the ship's logs there says that Bido is a man-made man -made nightmare. So it's yeah. a, it was a bioweapon made against somebody. You can and see here we're actually, fighting, we're actually fighting other versions of the player ship here. There, we had yeah. three at once there. Have a more tangible explanation because uh, in, in Gradius, uh, like the bacteria are just they're just supposed to exist because like human emotion exists. So it's kind of like a cop out explanation compared to this that they actually just, they tell you what they what it was. That boss looks like a homage to the first boss from R-Type 1. Yeah, yeah that's the Keratops, which has been in every R-Type game. Of the tail attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got really lucky here, actually. Here? Right here? Right here. Ooh, my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was lucky. Kind of slinked out of there. Oh. Yeah. Rawr. I like how the head popped too. <laughs> head popped there a little bit. Turn off the TV. Yeah, turn it off. <laughs> I love that little like sound clip that plays at the end of the stages too. It's just something about it, like. So uh, you're you're eight minutes away from the end of this run. At this point, when you're doing this like a run or a run of this length, do you start to find it, you know, become more difficult to stay focused because you've been concentrating for you know thirty minutes plus now? Does fatigue start to set in at all at this point in the game for you? It's not really fatigue, but more like nervousness. I mean, at least for me, that at this point the nerves start to act up, and I have to really focus that I won't just yeah. accidentally throw the controller away or something. Yeah. Have you had that happen to you a lot when you're trying to like no miss the game where you'd get to the to the stage like here and then something stupid would happen and you'd throw a run away or not, not really no. Just oh no, a... there's an astronaut! Ah! Yeah. The yeah, lunar feeder. Is... <laughs> yeah, this is a freaky stage. Oh my gosh, I'm tripping out. Yeah, you get the, the wandering sperms there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> unsubtle imagery, really, isn't it? It's unsubtle yeah. imagery. Yeah. They're just like, that's what we're... Yeah. And the bait... And a bridge, and a bridge plane! Bridge, and, you know... So yeah, is I, this... I think this is actually inside the Bido. Oh. Okay. Oh, is in like in, in... Oh, I see, like, inside, like, some big Bido monster or something, you mean? Uh, I think it's like the Bido dimension, or uh, yeah. Ah, right. Oh, there's Big Ben. Was that upside is that down? Big... Yeah, wow. It's upside down for some reason. Oh. Man, those crystal babies is. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> Bido babies. Uh, uh. And some it's DNA like, we're destroying. Yeah, it's like the last stage of Blazing Star or something. Yeah, you're killing some. Oh, you're actually killing DNA helixes. That's yeah. yeah. And there's some uh, chemical symbols in the background. I don't know what they mean. Some mass scraps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Someone do tell us if they can comment in the YouTube channel what those are. They're real. Um, what type of controller did Gags play with for this run? That's from Beats Go in the chat. Mm. Hang on. Actually, I think I used... Uh, just a standard DualShock controller. Oh. Yeah, that's Do you use the analog stick or the digital pad on that? The D-pad. The, 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 the right. uh, this one has the, the the speed control, not the shoulder button, so it's handy to have them here. Yeah. Oh, you actually use the speed uh, adjustment here? Well, well, not here exactly, but uh, I did use them a few times. Oh, okay. And we didn't really talk about the speed adjustment ability. No, that's actually a big difference compared to the earlier games where they had just a speed pickup. But here you can yeah. control it to four degrees. So this is a fer fertilized egg, right? Wow. 
That's pretty crazy. And they're escaping the egg. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> not normal. <laughs> not, not scary. That yeah. isn't what it's actually like. They kind of look like the probe weapons, uh, the ancient probe weapons that they use in Stargate SG-1, I think. But, you know, the ancient the sperms? Ones. Yeah, <laughs> ancient ones from um, Stargate SG-1. Uh. <laughs> Guys, you gotta hold me. Oh, I'm scared. So we really, we're at this point, we're at the point in this in the game now, Gigs, where basically everything kills you at this point, right? There's not much free space on the screen at all, really, is there? Actually, I think stage seven is much easier than stage five or six. Because you think? There's not, yeah, there's not that much environmental hazards. So it's most of the enemies flowing around. But there's a overall there's more space to go around. So terrain um, adds a lot of difficulty, huh? Yeah. How how would you um, reconcile like when you're playing a shooter where you can destroy everything, but then there's that pesky terrain and which are a hallmark of hor horizontal shooters to get around? Like, what kind of enjoyment do you get? Like, oh, I avoided that, or oh. Uh, I just think it makes for a more interesting stage design when you have to dodge something that's undestroyable and also yeah. bullets and enemies. It just makes for more interesting patterns. And this is a hallmark of a lot of horizontal shmups and Gradius and Darius as well. The idea of having a large object that slowly moves across the screen and you have to just move around the perimeter of it. Um, it's the mainstay of a lot of those sorts of shmups. Yeah. I wish you'd see it more in vertical shmups myself. That's why I really like Dragon Spear, because it really uses uh, environmental hazards in that game. Yeah, and I think uh, Dodonpachi DFK gets uh, that okay, here, uh, oh, people. Yeah. Oh, he's stolen your bit. Oh. He has stolen it. Oh. So is this the final boss now, Gags, or? Yeah, kind of. The game doesn't really have a, an iconic final boss or everything, but... Uh... The Bido takes the force and impregnates itself, maybe. And then, <laughs> and then it starts charging up the those uh, the delta attack again. So you have to yeah. dodge everything without the force. So you have to really rely on the beast here and the missiles. Oh, I see the dose gauge is going up. Okay. Yeah. Did you um, did you have a hard time learning this boss? Actually, no, no. This this is actually pretty easy because there's. Nothing to memorize, you just have to react to what's happening. Oh, oh there we go. Ooh. Your bit exploded. A winner is you. Yeah, and now we're escaping from the bite of the dimension or whatever this place is. Good stuff, Gags, good stuff. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I like how they let you shoot here, like... <laughs> yeah, that, that's not me, actually. That's oh, the, it isn't? Yeah, that's the computer. Cut scene here. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like you were doing stuff. No. So, I mean, Gags, if, if you were to, if you wanted to try and kind of to a certain extent, sell the R-Type series to people who hadn't tried them before but were thinking about doing it. What kind of would you say are the really best things about the R-Type series that might compel someone to try them? Well, as we've just seen, they have these great set pieces and music and imagery, but also the gameplay is very solid. It's very, very well thought out, I think. Yeah. Do you prefer these sorts of... of um, shmups to say Hori's like you know the the bigger brasher Hori's like Pro Gear or Blazing Star. I mean, do you prefer ones to have the more calm down sort of approach with the more terrain based obstacles and stuff like that? Or I think I prefer the latter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do like Blazing Star, but and it yeah. it, it too has uh, environmental hazards and very cool bosses and everything. But yeah, very good music as well. Blazing Star is a fantastic soundtrack. Yeah. Actually, the ending is slightly different here. If you're playing with the R13, that ship can't escape from the Bido place, and it gets stuck there until it's oh. rescued in R-Type Final. Oh. So I think the R13 is the 
cannon ship used in the R-Type storyline. There yeah, we go. But, How about that? Yeah. Rank one. No, no, <laughs> no miss. Nothing. Excellent. 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 Yeah. Great, great play gags. Wow. Mission, yeah, success, seriously mission good. complete. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing about these games as well, is you make it to a certain extent look quite easy because, like, you know where the things are and stuff. But anyone who ever sits down and tries to play an R-Type game, you know, for the first time, the first 10 or 20 credits you play of the game can be so overwhelming and so kind of almost seem hopeless. Um, so he makes it look easy, but it really, really is not. Um and I think it's definitely recommended for, you know, people who've enjoyed watching this video to try these R-type games for themselves. Available on MAME, on PS1, PS2, etc. So I like how you went there to the war record. Uh, it said you only spent an, uh, eight hours and a half playing the game. So is that accurate? Yeah. That's mostly accurate. I had played the game previously uh, a couple of year, er, years earlier, the Pala version. But uh, then I forgot about it, and uh, then I got the USA version and started playing it. So I was oh. uh, somewhat familiar with the first three or four stages. So um, Super Soaker in the chat says, what exactly is the background story for R-Type? I've never played any of the games. And we touched on it briefly, the idea that humanity was in a war and they created these bioweapons mm -hmm. to try and help them. Um, and things went south from there. And they basically created the Baidos. That's correct, right? They they made it yeah. so to help win a war. Then the Baido gained sentience, and um, Dos Keratops, or whatever the hell that stupid boss's name is, um, and things went things went badly from there. That's the long and short of it. Yeah, actually, actually, I think there's some time travel involved. Yeah. When when the Baido was uh, invented, and then it got away, it went back into the past, humanity's yeah. past, to uh, destroy it there. So. It can destroy the humanity. Can destroy Biden in the future. It's very, it's very Terminator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. One of the best shmup stories, actually. I think um, not quite as good as uh, not quite as good as Muchy Muchy Pork story, but uh, still oh. pretty good nonetheless. I've been playing that lately. It's a great game. Uh, it is a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a point. There's a R Type uh, wiki called. It's at rtype.wikia.com, so you can read read the stories and see the big timeline. It's a great site. So are you a fan of um, R-Type Final as well, uh, Gags? Um, I don't like it as much as I'd like to. It's uh, much more slow-paced, mm. and I think yeah. um, it kind of went overboard with uh, 101 ships. Yeah, I, I have that with PS2, and I've never understood the point of having 101 different ships. It, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a ludicrous number. Um, yeah, yeah, some of the ship are, ship, ships are completely useless. You can't do anything with them. And some yeah. of them are so pow powerful, you can just breeze through the game. Yeah, yeah. Did you, have you actually one CC'd it? Have you played it enough to get a clear of it? Or? No, I haven't. I do have it, but uh, I just I don't like it that much. I'm not yeah. sure if I'll ever do it. Have you I cleared the other ones? Like uh, two, we know, you've done Le we know you've done the original, but have you also cleared, you know, number two and Leo and stuff like that? Well, well to be fair, I've only cleared the first loop in the first game. I don't right. really like loops. And uh, I've been meaning to get back into two, which I think I'll do soon, inspired by this event. Yeah. yeah. So you think maybe at some point in the near future we might see a uh, no miss um, of our type 2 first loop yeah. from you? Oh, yeah, maybe. In the, yeah, maybe. In the meanwhile, I also, I also no miss the pull star, which is made by the same people, or at least some mm. of the same people. Mm. Very similar game. Yeah. So what is, for those who maybe don't know, what is your, where can, we, where can people check out your other replays? What is your YouTube channel or uh, website? Uh, website, it's www.kex.com, G-H-E-G-S.com. And uh, you can find the YouTube link there as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Indeed, indeed. Um, I just want to go back to the, uh, kind of the, how much this game uh, was about the presentation, like, I like how I like how at the very end of the game it went straight into the credits, like I I, I kind of ex I don't know I like I didn't expect the same screen that you're like you know flying from the credits to go in, but uh, I guess uh, as kind of like the general idea that you know uh, about uh, shmups in general, like you know they're generally you know about a twenty to uh, you know a forty minute experience all the way up to eighty minutes. Sometimes I mean you got Gradius Five with an eighty minute loop, but I kind of like I kind of like this idea that shmups are 
you know, usually within an hour, and that's like the same length of, say, like a episode of a show or a movie you yeah. might watch. Yeah. Well, you want to think about the classic example of this. The, the most classic example of a story-based shmup I can think of is, of course, Lilat Wars on the N64. It's not strictly speaking a shmup. But Wait, the point Star is... Fox? It, yeah, okay. yeah. And it, it has a lot of the elements of, of, of shmups. And you can see that, I think, is um, a good example of kind of movie or movie-style presentation mixed with this sort of genre of game. And I've often mm. thought that if... Uh, a de developer wanted to get shmups back into the mainstream. Um, all they would really have to do would be to merge the Star Fox style presentation with even just shmup gameplay or bullet hell gameplay, but mix it with a proper story. Sinamore tried that a little bit, but of course Sinamore had terrible, terrible gameplay that made you want to die. Um, so that didn't work so well, but that, he was certainly in the right, right zone. And I think the R-Type series, ever since really 1987, has been almost to a certain extent, in my opinion, pushing towards that goal. Um, and it's just a shame that this series of games hasn't got more recognition. Or, um, and it's just a shame, even bigger, that Irem, of course, has gone out of business. That is a real shame. Yeah, yeah. that is. That is. I would have loved to see R-Type Delta HD. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is the point, was there was about a 10-year period of time, really, from when the PS2 came out, when, you know, shmups, arcades by then were really, really dying. And shmups like on the ps2 not apart from cyveria and maybe a couple others there's not a particularly great collection so it's like this 10-year gap where very little kind of came out and i don't count radiant silver gun because that's a horrid game but it almost feels like it, it we could you know sinamore started to a certain extent i think a little bit of a shmups revival in jamestown as well yeah. Um, and I think if a, if a games developer could would just take a chance i think you know they may find there's a lot of money to be made in this genre Mm. And I think I think Dark Souls and Demon Souls is really seen. You've seen that hard games can sell well. Super Meat Boy as well. Yeah, and I shmups, agree with that. Yeah. shmups are hard games. And I think in this day and age now, as opposed to five years ago, there's more of a market for hard games. You know, with this pervading view from people that maybe games are becoming more casual or whatever. I am. Um, it's right. time for those people who want to feel more hardcore to play hardcore games and. Now I think would be the time for shmups to have a revival, as I said, if someone will just take a chance on it. Yeah, I'd agree with that too. I find myself as like a lifelong gamer. I've kind of settled on the genre given like my time commitments. You can get so much uh, enjoyment and challenge in just such a short time with these games. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's the point. Actually, Gegs, I didn't ask you, how long have you been playing shmups for? Um, I think around... 11, 12, 13 years, something like have you, that. Have you played them consistently throughout that period of time, or have you had breaks? We've not played them for a year or two, or no, 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 not, not breaks that long. I mean, sometimes I take some time playing some other game, but uh, mm. it's always been just Smash Bros. Always there, so it's, so it's easy to just pick them up and play for a yep. while compared yep. to something yep. like Fallout. So yeah, 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 yeah no, indeed, indeed. Yeah, that's why I think that's why we all like shmups is because the gameplay is so immediate and gratification is so immediate. Yeah, personally, that, my you know. favorite thing about shmups is that uh, you're instantly capable of kicking ass. It's just uh, your own skill. There's not yeah. you. You don't have to power up your character at all. It's all no. it's all you. Yeah. You don't have to level to 90, get 24 other people to come along with you and try to get them to all stop dying and hope they have good internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no. I... <laughs> yes, that's certainly the, certainly the truth, yeah. Well, that was a really good episode. I'm happy we checked out our type Delta. Indeed. Yes. You know. Complete opposite, of, almost complete opposite of Mushi Futari Ultra, and yeah, I mean about any kind of about that story aspect, like the story aspect, like mm. with Dark Souls and R Type Delta, like you have uh, the gameplay, it it, it kind of it goes with the story because I mean in R Type Delta you have the Bido, and you see these enemies that are like completely infested, and like when I when I was watching this replay, like it makes me wonder like what happened, you know, like. What yeah. happened to like the, these things? And well, why don't you yeah. just go and play R Type Final, and then you yeah. may have a measure of understanding. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. There you go. There's the hook for everyone watching who wants to know what the next <laughs> chapter of the story is. Go get R Type Final for the PS2. It's like five pounds online. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So I think that'll do it. Thank you, Gags. Uh, it's a real pleasure yeah. having you. Um, yeah, thanks for having this. me. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Gags. Thank you. Do we know what we're doing next time yet? Or, or you guys are doing next time yet? Another horizontal game. I know that for sure. Don't yeah. know what yet. Yeah. We're 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 taking it down, you know, giving some love to the Horries. But yeah, yeah. yeah, guys, we're always taking suggestions. So if you guys got a good hor horizontal shmup uh, replay, um, PM either me or Aquas, you know, mm -hmm. Aquas. So yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's do some horizontal shooters. Oh, God, that is oh my goodness, my goodness. Do it all, <laughs> do it all right, well, guys, well, look. Thank you, uh, thank you for having me on. And, yeah, thanks. Uh, do yeah, it thank all you, everyone. Way. Yeah, do it all indeed. the way. Do it all the way. Go full shmup. Go full shmup. <laughs> Always full shmup. <laughs> and thanks to the viewers. You know, tell your friends about SDG Weekly. Spread the spread the word. Shmups are awesome. S spread the gospel, so. guys. And and a big thanks to Soda. Thank you, Soda. Yep. Hold thank down. you, Mr. Soda. Thank you.